All right, guys, so now we're going to try to get through the geologic history of life in as short a time as possible. Let's go. The first era we're going to talk about that has significant life, visible life, is what we call the Paleozoic Era. Paleozoic Era runs from about 540 to about 250 million years ago. It's split into five or six time periods, depending on who you talk about, Cambrian, Ordovician, Devonian, Carboniferous, or Pennsylvanian and Mississippian, and the Permian. The oxygen levels start out at about 18%. Sometimes they actually get higher than today's numbers. Sometimes they're lower. All the continents are massed into one huge continent that we call Guanduana. And throughout this era, you're going to have multiple orogenic uh, events happening, resulting in the formation of the Taconic Mountains, the Acadian Mountains, and the Allegheny Mountains, or the Taconic Mountains, the Catskills, and the Allegheny Plateau, if we're looking at a map of New York. If we look throughout this time, basically, one of the big things that's going to allow life to, ev to evolve is the development of the ozone layer. This happened between the first time period and the second time period, the Cambrian and Ordovician. The ozone layer is going to block harmful UV radiation, which lets life develop. Now, when we go through this, and we're going to do this relatively quick, you start off with life in what we call the Cambrian explosion. It happens at the beginning of the time period and life is basically a crapshoot. The oceans are empty and so life just tries every possible form. And so you get some really unique, strange looking creatures like the ones you're seeing in front of you. You get the development of trilobites, which we've seen these little <coughs> horseshoe looking like creatures. <coughs> Excuse me. And you get the, the evolution of things like anomalocaris, which are these huge predators that are incredibly weird looking. As the time goes on, the earth keeps changing, the continents keep moving, life gets more and more complicated, more trilobites, more cephalopods, like the squid you see in front of you, and things that appear just as, you know, strange events. Animals evolve, some of them dominate, some of them don't, extinction events happen, life keeps going and going and going. When we get to, you know, the middle of the time period, life slowly starts moving its way towards land. And the big way that that happens, the first thing that does that, we think, are plants. Plants would have been the first creatures to colonize, or not creatures, but organisms to colonize land. And they start to change the planet again, because what do plants do? Photosynthesis. This photosynthesis is going to dump tons and tons of oxygen into the atmosphere and change the atmosphere, which is going to change life. Okay? And this has both positive and negative effects. It can fluctuate temperatures, and so we get periods of glaciation, ice ages, and periods of warming, and this, that, whatever. Eventually, life on land also gets animals you get the first land creatures which you think are like millipedes and centipedes like the ones that you see before you now <clears throat> as time keeps going in the oceans life keeps competing 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 eventually you get the development of the first fish with jaws which is actually a big thing okay and those fish are going to evolve further and further and further and further and eventually you get the development of very interesting things okay on the land stuff is still going on you start getting your uh orogenesis taconics and all these other things going on but in the oceans you're getting the development of crazy creatures like the two that you see in front of you now okay these creatures were unique they were huge they were the size of buses in some cases and they were deadly predators you also get the evolution of the first sharks although this guy's kind of weird looking he is a shark okay life moves on to land you get the movement of scorpions and arachnids and things like that we think those would have been the first insects and arachnids would have been the first land creatures okay eventually you do get the moving on of amphibians and things like that and you you hit the time period known as the mississippian or the pennsylvanian or the carboniferous and the reason that these are important is because you get the development of coal beds during this time you had swamps covering most of the planet but you didn't have the bacteria that could break down the trees when they died so they just laid there and stack upon stack upon stack of plant material just got compressed and eventually turned into lignite and then eventually bituminous coal and anthracitic coal which we have today you also had gigantic bugs like dragonflies that were six feet across cockroaches the size of your hands sounds like a fun time as time kept going on you started to get the development of reptiles these reptiles came to dominate the planet and you ended up with things like dimetrodon and its sail-backed relatives along with various other different types of mammal-like reptiles which no longer appear on earth but did exist at that time and this is the permian you get very hostile conditions in some parts of the planet and so life has to find a way but like it always does it did 
unfortunately, at the end of the time period, you had what we call the Great Dying, which is one of the greatest extinction events ever to happen in the history of Earth. It's the Permian Triassic extinction. We think that about 70% of all land creatures went extinct, about 90 to 95% of all marine life went extinct. We think the primary cause of this was massive volcanic eruptions that happened in what is today present day Siberia in Russia that filled the atmosphere with a very bad combination of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, and various other things. This changed conditions in the oceans, and you had this massive die off. But that massive die off allowed for arguably the coolest creatures ever to come into existence and dominate. The next era that we run into is the Mesozoic era, and the Mesozoic era runs from 255 to 65 million years ago. It's split into three time periods the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous time period. At the beginning of this era, the continents are all mashed together into one huge supercontinent known as Pangaea. As the era proceeds, the continents will separate. Now, the Mesozoic era is known as the Age of Reptiles. Reptiles will come to dominate all aspects of the world. They dominate the sea, like the terrible monster that you see in front of you right now. Okay, They dominate the air, like the, the animal that you see in front of you now. But most importantly, they come to dominate the land as well. Okay, they become dinosaurs, everybody's favorite creatures you've been waiting all year. The dinosaurs come in all sizes. They come from the very small to the incredibly huge monster that you see in front of you now. Some eat meat, some eat vegetables, they hunt each other, they live. They come to dominate the planet for over 300 million years. To give you an idea, man, in some shape or form, if we go back far enough, has only been here about 2 million years and not in our current form. In our current form, about 900,000 years. These animals dominated the planet for an incredibly huge amount of time they took all different forms from the triceratops to the stegosaurus to everybody's favorite tyrannosaurus rex everywhere and everywhere any way in between we saw them okay the velociraptors stegosaurs everything that we could possibly want but they weren't the only creatures to come into existence. During this time period, we also get the evolution of a couple of other serious creatures. We get the evolution of birds. Birds are actually relatives of the dinosaurs. So that pigeon that you see on the street corner is actually an ancient or a new cousin of the ancient Tyrannosaurus rex. The first bird that we see is Archaeopteryx, or maybe not the first, but one of the best known first examples is this creature known as Ar Archaeopteryx, which you see before you right now. And it has given us an indication of where birds came from. They came from dinosaurs, from small, medium dinosaurs turning into these types of creatures. We also get the evolution of various different types of insects that we have currently. Ants, flies, bees, all these things would have evolved during this era. We also get the evolution, most importantly, of small mammals, okay, uh, which will come to be incredibly important. You're listening to one now, or at least a relative of one and the evolution of flowering plants prior to this there actually were no flowering plants no pollen so if you go back before the cretaceous period you didn't have to worry about allergies i mean you could have still gotten eaten by an allosaur but no allergies so that's a plus okay so as time goes on the creatures keep evolving and they keep evolving but it doesn't last forever 65 million years ago a major extinction event ha event happens known as the kt extinction event we think that this event was primarily caused twofold by the impact of a six and a half mile wide asteroid into the Yucatan Peninsula just off the coast of Mexico, along with massive volcanic eruptions happening in what is present day India in the Deakin Plateau. Okay, this combination created what we call a nuclear winter and eventually ended up with the death of all the non avian dinosaurs and a large percentage of the life that existed. The last era we're going to talk about is the Cenozoic era. It begins 65 million years ago and it continues until today. It's split into three time periods, the Paleogene, the Neogene, and the Quaternary. Uh, it's known as the Age of Mammals because they become the dominant species. And we have the most amount of geologic evidence of any era because it's the most recent. So it's had the least amount of time to weather and erode away. Now, when we look at this time period, what we'll notice is that the continents keep drifting more and more and more towards their current positions. But you'll see times when different parts of North America or the Middle East are covered by water or green or which are now desert. So the continent and the world keeps changing slowly over time. What comes to dominate during this time? Like we said, mammals. They take lots of different shapes. They go from like the weird Galiptodon armadillo thing to massive marsupial wolves bigger than a car to all sorts of creatures to eventually us. And so the world changes. As we look, the world 
uh, continuously changes, the rise of mountains changes weather patterns, and so you go from most of the world being covered in forests to being covered in savannas and grasslands, okay? And the world keeps changing and keeps alternating. And so what ends up happening is you get the development of multiple different types of creatures. You get the development of multiple different types of environments. You get the development of various different features, which we see now, like the Isthmus of Panama comes into existence. Volcanic activity in the Western United States. Uh, glaciers m moving across the planet and covering, you know, large sections of it and then retreating. Okay, you end up with ice ages, woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, and in the end, you end up with us. And uh, here is a cute example of us, but ultimately, all right, us. guys. So that does it. I tried to fit in 4.6 billion years of Earth's history into as small a time frame as I could. I hope it helps, and I will see you guys later. Study hard. Bye, guys.